Right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Boston Public School Superintendent Search Committee. Uh, I'm co-chair Pam Ettinger, and because this is a remote session, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Liz Sullivan to please do the roll call. Thank you, Dr. Ettinger. Ms. Harvey? Mr. O'Neill? Dr. Pignato? Present. Mr. Roundtree? Present. Ms. Tang? Present. Mr. Valenzuela? Present. Thank you. Dr. Edinger? Present. Thank you. Ms. Lopera? Present. And Mr. McNeil. So we do have a quorum. Uh, we have three members absent and six members present. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Sullivan. So tonight's session is being um, shared live on Zoom. Um, it will be rebroadcast on Boston City TV and posted on the search committee's webpage, uh, bostonpublicschools.org slash SUPT dash search, that's soup search. Um, the committee is pleased to be offering live simultaneous interpretation in the following languages. It will be in Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Cabo Verdean, Verdiano, did I say that right? Let me try again. Cabo yes, Verdiano. Yes, got it this time. Um, it will also be in Cantonese, in Mandarin, in Vietnamese, in Somali, French, and American <laughs> Sign Language. Um, after the interpreters finish introducing themselves to you and providing Zoom instructions, we will activate the interpretation icon or the globe at the bottom of your screen. Click the icon to select your language preference. So will our Cantonese interpreter please introduce yourself and give Zoom instructions in Cantonese, please. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm Anna. I will be your Cantonese interpreter for the meeting today. 大家好,下午好,我是Anna,我是你的廣東話同步翻譯員。一間見到我地球的時候就按下去揀Chinese,就會去到廣東話的翻譯頻道,用手機的話就按三個點,點點點,再揀更多,再揀Chinese,亦都
nous prenons plaisir après midi encore pour nous avoir, pour nous capables de présenter pour le programme ça et que nous sommes capables de traduire en créole pour nous. Si vous avez besoin dans la conversation, vous avez clip dans le globe qui est en bas et qui et puis vous avez choisi la créole là, nous sommes capables de traduire pour nous. Nous souhaitons bonne chance d'ores et déjà. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, will our Cabo Verdiano interpreter please introduce yourself and give Zoom instructions in Cabo Verdiano, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jose. I'm going to be interpreter for Cabo Verdiano for tonight's meeting. Boa noite. Meu nome é José. Estou ali. A minha e meus interpreter para aquela reunião de hoje noite ali. Para os que têm laptop ou desktop, nós podemos estar aqui na Globo, onde nós estamos selecionando a nossa língua de preferência, que é Cabo Verdiano. E se nós temos tablet ou nós estamos com a Qualquer uh, telefone, eu estou selecionando aquele três pinguinhos, ali tem o estágio nas línguas de preferência que acabo de ano, eu estou selecionando na qualquer forma, se eu tenho qualquer pergunta, eu estou dirigindo para mim, não está fazendo pergunta. Thank you. Thank you for your help. And next will be our Somali interpreter. Please introduce yourself and give Zoom instructions in Somali. Good evening. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be a Somali interpreter. Maga ego wa Camilla kuso doa la awa shirke na loga hala el gudiga e musha ento kusapsa. Marka wa hadiga heli te antan channel ka Korea halka sanska digi seno. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next our French interpreter. Please introduce yourself and give Zoom instructions in French. Good evening, my name is Angel. I'll be your French interpreter for tonight's meeting. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Angel. Je serai votre interprète français ce soir. Si vous voulez écouter la réunion en français, allez en bas de votre écran. Il y aura le groupe que vous allez cliquer. Quand vous cliquez sur le groupe, vous allez choisir le français et vous serez en mesure de nous écouter directement, vous interpréter la réunion en français. Merci, back to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And next is our Arabic Interpreter, please introduce yourself and give Zoom instructions in Arabic. I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. Oh, Hello, you. everyone. My name is Ahmed Arubai. I will be your Arabic interpreter today. Marhaban Jamian, and I am Ahmed Arubai, and I am a Turgim of Arabia. Had a Lyon, Bim Kankum Stima, a Turgim Bilo Arabia, Makila de Abilas Felishasha, Sichardun, Alamatil Kol Arbia, Odot Aladil Alamo, and that's the Tamekam Nichtiar, a Lugal Arabia, the Tamekam Stima, a Turgim Kamatan. Shukran Jazian. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And our um, American Sign Language interpreter tonight is Michelle Martinez. Michelle, if you would um, unmute your video and wave to our audience um, so we can, we can see you. There she is. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to all of you who are assisting us this evening. We will now activate the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen, and that's the globe. Um, I'd like to remind everyone to please speak at a slower speed speed to assist our interpreters. All right, thank you very much. Um, we will now move on to um, the public comments part of our, our meeting tonight. The committee has set aside 15 minutes of tonight's agenda for public comments. And uh, allow me to turn it over to Ms. Liz Sullivan to conduct this portion of our, um, of our meeting. Thank you, Dr. Edinger. Um, as you said, the public comment period for today's meeting will be 15 minutes in total. Each person will have two minutes to speak, and I will remind you when you have 30 seconds remaining. Those who require interpretation services will receive an additional two minutes. Please click the raise hand button if you wish to speak, and I will call on speakers in the order in which hands are raised. When I call your name, please state your name, affiliation, and what neighborhood you are from before you begin. Again, please raise your hands if you wish to speak. I believe we have 28 participants with us today. So if anyone would like to speak. Not seeing any hands at the moment. Okay. So, I see that um, Ms. Harvey has joined us. Oh, terrific. Hi, Ms. Okay, Harvey. Harvey. Good evening. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm in transit home from work, so. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Thank you for joining us. That's terrific. Ms. Harvey, we are in the middle of our um, public comments period. We are um, waiting for a little bit longer to see if there are any uh, participants who wish to speak. And they have a two minute opportunity. And the um, public comment periods would, if there are speakers, last about 15 minutes today. Do, do you see anyone, Ms. Sullivan? No, there are no hands. This is a first, Dr. Edinger. Oh, my goodness. Well, perhaps it's because it is our first meeting. And um, uh, why, why don't we, at this point, um, return to our regularly scheduled uh, matters for the, um, for the day? And then perhaps we can pause um, at maybe in another 10 minutes or so and try for a second round to see if there's anyone who wishes to speak. If not, then we'll go ahead and conduct the rest of the business. Would that be okay with the committee folks? Yes? All right, wait, okay, let's go. All right, so um, the, the, the majority of our topic today is to, is to sort of recall some of the um, procedural matters that have, um, that have passed um, since um, we came together last uh, for, for, for planning um, the, committee list, um, the community listening sessions. And um, maybe we can go through some of those and, and then open it up um, and chat about um, what you've observed. So um, the first, I think, the piece of news we have is about the um, request for proposals for a search consultant. I believe that the responses to the um, response for proposals um, for the search firm were due today at noon. Um, the original deadline was Friday, um, March 18th, but because of a because some conflicting dates were posted publicly, um, we've decided to extend the response deadline. To be fair, um, to to meet the um, the latest um, the latest posted date, um, so they should ought have been in today. And then from this point on, I believe that the RFP review team will. Um, review and present recommendations to the school committee for approval by early April. Um, the RFP or the um, request for proposal review team members are um, Chief Human Capital Officer Al Taylor, uh, Mr. Michael O'Neill who is a member of our committee and uh, Mr. Jose Valenzuela who's with us tonight. Thank you, Jose. Um, we have received, um, I'm told seven RFP submissions today. So that's a pretty healthy number. Um, okay, so, so those are the, um, what we have so far with the RFPs. In terms of the listening sessions, um, let me recap. Um, we held the remote community listening sessions on the 9th of March, and then again on the 15th of March. Um, we had about 650 folks register and more than 450 attendees across these two sessions. Uh, the first session was conducted in English with translations, and the March 15th session was in Spanish with translations back into the other languages. Um, we have two additional listening sessions coming up. One is going to be a student focus session this Thursday, uh, March 24th, uh, from six to eight, and that's going to be co-hosted um, by our um, by our student co-chair, Marcus. And then another general listening session will be on Saturday, April 2nd from 10 to 12. And that would allow folks um, an additional opportunity uh, to, to have input. And that's gonna be co-hosted by our Boston City Councilor, Julia Mejia. Um, so, so those were the listening session status to date. Um, there are also other formats that we've had for engagement. Um, video testimony and text submissions are now being accepted via the, um, the search webpage. And last week, uh, we launched an online survey that is available in all the major BPS languages. Um, as of four o'clock today, um, well, no, as of four o'clock on Monday, we received um, over 300 survey responses. Um, and then there are other forms of feedback um, that we've been that we've been gathering through the email address. Um, the goal for us is to collect all of the feedback through all of these different venues, um, synthesize them, 
look for themes and we can talk about some of those today um, and share it with the community in early April. Um, one of the important pieces about collecting this data is to figure out how this input will inform the job description that's ultimately going to be the candidate's guideposts um, to applying for this position. Um, so, so these are important times uh, for us to, to be able to talk about these themes. Um, let me go ahead and open it up now to our committee members for questions, comments, clarifications, and talk a bit about some of the major themes that you've observed so far. And then based on what you've been hearing, how you would imagine this would impact the, um, the job descriptions, or I call them professional profiles, right? Or the leadership profiles that we're gonna be using um, to, to, to guide the search. Okay, I know this is not a shy group, so. Carlene, you look like you want to talk. <laughs> She's smiling. I know she does now. <laughs> I was muted. Uh, yes, yeah, well, specifically that part. Car Carlene, let me let me let me do an apology here. I think I what I did was um, I left out Jessica Tang as the co-host. We, um, for the student session with Marcus. Jessica, I'm so sorry, my apologies. All right, Carlene, there we go. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, so we're speaking about what we've heard so far. From the yeah, what, what, what are you hearing? What, what, what resonates with you and in terms of major themes that you've been hearing? Um, yes, yeah, so a need for um, better communication mm. uh, stood out to me. Uh, another thing that stood out to me was transportation. Um, I think families are very frustrated with the inconsistency in transportation with buses being late or not showing up or not having coverage. Um, the other is uh, school safety. Mm. Um, I heard a few things mentioned about uh, bullying uh, that some of the families mentioned. Um, Another thing that I heard was um, how we were addressing losses because of the pandemic so that students would not continue to be academically behind. Um, that stood out to me. Yeah, thank you. So those are the bucket things that stood out to me. Yeah, thank you, Carlene. Yes. Others? Yeah, I can, I can go next. Um, Jean, thank you. <laughs> I, I know what it's like to 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 ask people to volunteer and then and so rather than be voluntold, I'll, I'll just... <laughs> I'm good in the classroom. I will call on you. <laughs> Thank so, you, Chief. Yeah, so just to build on on what Dr. Pignato said, um, transportation and infrastructure um, was one thing that, that um, numerous parents brought up uh, in terms of the you know the qualities that they're looking for in the person, someone who's a listener and collaborator, uh, someone who is bilingual. Um, someone who um, really values um, anti-racism uh, and will um, engage with folks uh, with transparency. Um, school safety was something that was, um, you know, that came across very strongly. And also um, in our most um, uh, recent listening session that was conducted in Spanish, um, there was a lot of interest in, um, in school lunch and in, in, and in, in, in breakfast. Um, so really someone who will focus on uh, you know, kind of meeting the needs of, you know, all of the needs of our students um, as, as part of their, uh, their planning. Um, also big, um, a number of folks um, indicated that um, someone to be the superintendent um, would be preferred if they also clearly communicated um, their beliefs in equity and inclusion. Um, and again, I know I mentioned this, but also, um, you know, numerous families um, indicated the importance of being able to uh, be bilingual to communicate and connect um, with our various communities. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jean. It, Jose, do, does that resonate with you or some resonate with you more deeply? What, what um, have you missed? Yeah, I mean, I think what, I, um, what stood out to me um, were the, the folks who shared that they were hoping for someone who really has like a deep understanding of the community 
Um, you know, I don't think that necessarily need, means someone from Boston, but I think it means someone who understands Boston, our history, our school system, our needs. Um, and I think um, I heard a lot of folks talk about um, ha having someone who really values parents as allies and experts um, and just someone who's really transparent. And I think those were three of my biggest takeaways in terms of like a summary of lots of things that I heard, although I also heard lots of the things that were already mentioned. And I agree with those as some of the big pieces from the um, listening sessions. Yeah. I was really touched by the holistic nature the parents and, and, and the community members talked about the students, right? It is not just the classroom, it's not just the lunchroom, it's not just the, the playgrounds, not just transportation, but that, that, that the, the whole piece, the whole network, the coherence of all of those elements. Um, I, was, I was really impressed as to how, how passionate folks were. Did, did, did you feel that, Jessica? What resonated with you? Yeah, I was just reviewing my notes and I think, um most things have been touched upon, but certainly looking for someone who can advance the equity work in the district, um, ex has a lot of experience, um, a commitment to anti-racism, value stakeholders, uh, parent, student, and educator input. Um, I made a note about cursive seemed to come up in the first one. <laughs> That's true. And then, uh, and then uh, bilingualism, which was mentioned. And then um, one, um, topic I think that hasn't necessarily been mentioned, but I know came up quite a bit too, is transparency to the community. Yes. And so someone who who can, um, I think, uh, commit to that transparency and communication. Um, definitely modernizing buildings and facilities came up. And that's something that, you know, all of these things actually are things that we at the BT have also been advocating for. Um, but I put a several stars next to bullying in schools and fights that came up a lot in the last one in particular. Um, and then transportation, meals, nutrition, and then physical wellness, including um, addressing obesity were some of the other topics that I had um, taken some notes on. No, thank you, that, 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 that's very complete. Roxy? Roxy is probably still traveling. Uh, is this I'm traveling, but you know, if you can hear me, well, I can. We're fine. You sound okay, good. That sounds good. I think the things that stood out to me were definitely what everyone said as far as transparency. There is definitely throughout a theme throughout it is that, that there must be clear communication. This we must have someone that's really an excellent communicator to all the stakeholders, community, students, families, educators. Um, and I think in, in a summarized manner, individuals were asking for someone who is proficient, experienced in equity and highlighting and elevating traditionally marginalized communities, which includes special ed students, multilingual learners, black students. You know, I think the, when you put it all together, they were saying, we need our families to be heard and seen also to be able to get access to high quality education. Hires a leader with subtlety to make systemic changes. So people were also asking for changes, leadership, and a strong commitment to the community, the Boston community, the public school community. We're asking for that connection piece because uh, we are a large urban district and it's not the same as other areas. And people were saying that basically, like I heard very clearly, we need someone that understands us, that can, that is ready to, get started and get to work because they know and they understand the dynamics that are occurring here in this community. Yeah, well, th thank you. That's, um, I too heard um, the, the piece of um, the urgent need for clearer communication, more frequent communications, communications in different languages to allow for um, wider understanding. Lorena, do you wanna sort of help us pivot and transition here um, in terms of, um, hearing what we heard and how that would impact the job description or the professional, the leadership profile that we would um, need to help craft um, for, for the position. Um, sure, thank you for that. Uh, first, I just wanna start by saying that um, these, the pieces that were mentioned were also themes that um, I, I was also hearing. Um, I also had an opportunity to engage with 
a different community group who had their separate um, session last night. Um, and I just had the opportunity to observe and listen in on that. Um, and just the idea of opportunities, ensuring that we're really preparing our students and providing our students with opportunities for once they leave um, Boston Public Schools. Um, so um, there was a lot of conversation around what are the opportunities in terms of technical and vocational um, schools within like the programs within Madison, the investments in the school such as Madison um, and uh, the different pieces that our students are having access to once they leave BPS, whether that is higher education or not. Um, and so um, just wanted to highlight that uh, because that wasn't necessarily one of our official listening sessions, but it is something that I heard loud and clear from this particular group. Um, I think the biggest through line for me was um, to Jessica's point, the piece around transparency with community and I think authentic partnerships with families and uh, various stakeholders. That's something that we really need to continue to work towards. Um, families really want to be a part of our children's education and um, having that mindset of folks from the district to understand that and to value that. And so as we're thinking about the different pieces that have been currently highlighted and knowing that this is just a fraction of the feedback that we're collecting, right? There's right. still um, feedback that's being collected via the survey. There's still feedback that's being collected um, through the video testimonies or through the text testimonies or via email. Um, right. This is just a, a sliver of that. Uh, but then thinking through how do we really uh, quantify this into, um, into the job description and I think um, what might be helpful for us is to think through uh, what were even some of the, the pieces that we engaged with in the previous search, right? So what were some of the qualifications that we were looking for in the previous search or previous searches? Um, where did we hit, where did we hit the mark? Where did we not hit the mark? Where do we need to pivot? Um, so right. those are some of the, the things that are top of mind for me as we think about how does this feedback um, impact the job description that we hope to, to bring forth to the school committee? Right. I, I would also urge our members um, of the committee to look at the, um, the written testimonies that's been submitted. Um, they've been gathered um, in folders as they come through the um, uh, superintendentsearch.org um, email address. And I look through them all um, and, and it, they are, amazingly consistent in following some of the major points that we brought up tonight. Um, you can literally put them in buckets, right, to have to have these major areas um, quantified. Um, so, so it was a validation for me uh, to see to hear and see similar things across similar similar platforms. One thing about the the the, the leadership profile is that those are also the guiding benchmarks or the guiding points for us to develop the questions that we will be asking candidates so that there's a, a as, as you would put it, Lorena, so elegantly, a through line, right, B between the listening sessions and the input, the profile that we, that we'll be developing, and then the questions that will be then reflected back to the candidates um, as they come in. So um, other observations? about this particular piece, questions as to how we go about doing this? You have ideas? I actually had a question. I was wondering because it was asked in the previous listening session that was conducted in Spanish only, if there were gonna be future sessions held for some of our other larger multilingual groups. And I just think from my perspective, I hope we consider it because yes, it's more work, um, but I think the value of the previous session was just so clear um, that the, the speakers and even just those who were present who were just listening, um, I think felt really empowered to speak um, and share their thoughts and the language that they prefer. Um, and I think if we only do that once, I think we might miss an opportunity to give voice to um, at least some of the other communities that rely on er interpretation services and maybe feel like um, they aren't necessarily heard in the way like our 
um, commentators last week were felt actually really hurt. That was like pretty loud and clear from many who shared that they felt um, really validated. So I don't I don't know if we're considering that, but I did I do remember that people who were present last week had asked if we were going to do more of these, and we weren't able to answer that last week. So maybe no, I, uh, yeah. I I I don't know if we were able to answer it last week. Why don't we put a pin in it? Um, and 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 give it some consideration, or or if we can't do precisely that thing, perhaps there's other ways that we can um, make folks feel comfortable um, about being able to open up easily um, and have the kind of you know interactions that we had with the uh, with the Spanish session. Uh, I worry a little bit about um, having enough notice <laughs> for people to come. Perhaps we can. Um, I was thinking about what Lorena said that she had been listening to other groups who are holding other sessions and feeding back information into the into the main input site. Um, perhaps there can be other sessions that are conducted, not necessarily in this you know peanut gallery kind of session, but but a more um, more intimate session that 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 can allow for that kind of input in particular languages and provide translations there. Um, I don't know. So um, Liz, if you can help us capture this particular piece and help us think through it, maybe we can find us find a good solution to that. Um, could, could I make a possible suggestion while we're just brainstorming? Sure. That maybe one of our public sessions, like the one in April, mm. that's, so we have the student specific one. I don't think, you know, we should change that's it. Hard, that. right. right. But the April one is supposed to be for the public. I'm wondering if it's possible um, mm -hmm if we maybe set up breakout rooms where those groups could be heard in a specific session and maybe there is someone like a co-host. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a translator um, right. and those notes are recorded in that native language and then somehow it comes back to us. Right. That we yeah. can understand, right? Okay. Um, but that way it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel here. You just um, maybe figure out a way to um, have some guidance in smaller groups for the group for those who are looking to share insights in a like you said more intimate format. Yeah. So just okay. All right. So so let's capture that suggestion and and try to see if we can make it work. Unless you know, does folks have other kinds of wishes or suggestions? I think I that's like a you. fabulous idea. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually was going to say, so, Jose and I must be on the same way with like, I was going to say something similar about the use of breakout groups. Yeah. Um, but the other thing uh, I remember also in the first Zoom that there were a lot of comments about the lack of notice and yeah. um, and and uh, communication out about these hear uh, hearings. So I think we should just note that that was something that can certainly be improved upon, yep. uh, especially if we're going to add any sessions or do anything additional. Yeah, it's always getting the word out and you know getting people to 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 the right places. Okay, so we will try in all the ways that we know and can um, to to try to to try to broaden the uh, the communications out. Um, other questions? That was a good one. Well, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, only because I was trying to speak earlier. Okay, so I, I can see you as well. Oh, so you're good. <laughs> that's that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, I just want to really highlight what Jose said, because I said from the first meeting, families were asking for other languages besides Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's like now, we've, this is the first time we're hearing it, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, and along with the community groups, whether it, the various community groups that are providing feedback and having their own listening sessions, I do think we need to t take time to find space where, especially when you're hearing feedback from people say, it was good to be able to say this in my native language. Um, even if we're not saying do all nine or 10 of major languages in BPS, but I think at least three is appropriate as a starting point. You know what I mean? The first, the top three or so, I think um, we've done Spanish and it would be only appropriate to do additional um, two top languages in the district to be able to hear those voices. Because when you like, you hear people saying bilingual speaker, I think that people are also saying when they connect with language, they're saying someone, you don't have to be bilingual to be able to, understand a community and be able to also um, have experience and be proficient work with them. They're saying someone who understands, who is able to lead and who has experience making sure that these communities also are not forgotten. Um, that's really the message that's being broad, um, broadcasted. So I think just as we take summaries from the other listening groups, whether we work with the 
BPS DLAC group that has their, the, their SEAC um, language group specific groups, or you just promote it as BPS publicly or a community group that focuses on the other languages. There's multiple ways to do this and to start thinking about it now to make sure that it gets out there via text, email and everything else, um, because there is no doubt that there was a problem from the beginning with the timing of everything. Even for me, I'm on this committee and I don't get off work till five o'clock. So I'm still at work sitting in my chair when this meeting begins, you know what I mean? So respect of where people are at and thinking about the timing um, with families and everything I felt, I think is important to actually address and not to be like, okay, well, we just have to get this done. It, it can't just be steamrolled. It needs to be thoughtful also. Right. No, we, we appreciate, and we appreciate your time here, Roxy. You, you certainly add, add wonderful voices to, to this particular group, as well as um, the community. Let's take this under advisement and see what we can do, right, to accommodate all the things that we see. Um, can I just, sorry, Pam. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one quick thing. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we're thinking of Michelle, and I know she had a personal. Oh, I um, didn't know that. What? Um, our ASL interpreter. Oh, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so she had to leave. Um, and so I, I think we should also ensure that it, um, if there's anyone who didn't have accessibility because we didn't have interpreter tonight to right. be able to uh, create another opportunity there as well. Yeah. And, and also if this particular session is going to be recorded, um, we, can, we can dub um, so that anybody accessing um, tonight's proceedings will be able to understand. And I think there's, I, did we, I don't know if we enabled um, live, trans, uh, live transcripts, so. Live transcript is currently enabled. Oh, terrific. So at least folks will have some, um, some way of accessing um, the language here. So, okay, thank you. Um, other things that, that have come to you um, over the course of the last couple of weeks, um, I was actually really touched um, during the Spanish session um, for the first time, not well enough for the first time, but for one of the few times, the tables are turned, right? The, the, gaze, the gaze of languages are turned so that I'm the one who is, who is listening to the interpretation. My high school and college Spanish did not hold up. Um, I was following the transcript, but not well enough to understand. And, and, and that feeling of being othered, um, really allows me to understand how difficult it is for parents who speak other languages, like my parents did when I was going to school, right? They were Cantonese, they didn't understand a thing that was going on in my school. So if, if there's in any way that we can enable folks participation in that way, I, I think we should try. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll see what staff can help us cook up and maybe we can count on all of you to get the word out there um, and, and, and see if we can get this done. Um, are the issues that you want to bring up, are the curiosities, the questions that you've been asked that, that we weren't able to answer? Maybe we can help answer some of those. One question that has been brought to my attention um, by a couple of people is, um, I guess, during the survey response, the survey um, that you've been filling out. Yeah. Several people basically said they were very surprised um, and almost shocked of the way um, there wasn't a focus of questions or things related to special education in particular, especially knowing that the special education budget is significant in BBS um, mm -hmm. and that any leader must be able to balance the need for that large budget due to individualized needs mm -hmm. and also um, the fact that it's weaved throughout the entire district. So it's not a special ed problem because it, basically we're saying, Everyone keeps trying to say it's a special ed is a special ed parent problem, but it's not. It is a district wide concern because it impacts every single school and students, whether they have IEPs 504 or they're succeeding with good teaching practices while well, having them. So I guess the, the, as things were talked about, and I mean, I, I listened to it basically I, because we haven't developed the job description. We have it from the previous, when the previous superintendent was hired, but I think just even listening to those concerns and some of the equity um, things we've been working on in this district recently. Um, even as I read over that previous job description, I don't think it currently highlights enough the need for someone who has to take these 
equity concerns and groups that need access to quality education that have not received it um, and that unfortunately have struggled within our district, the need for them to be able and prepared to really transform the, that area so that all students can access high quality education. It's not enough to just say, be committed to equity, right? Because that's really generic. It needs to be a little bit more than that in stronger language, even from that previous um, job description. And granted, COVID happened, a lot happened since that job description was written that has brought a lot more to our focus and really be able to see what's happening in our district and in society. So I think those things that have occurred have um, made people more aware and that job, the job description needs to highlight that our families, our educators, our district is aware that um, this is a concern that we need addressed. Thank you. We will uh, we we will definitely make sure that that's one of the uh, um, one one of the lenses by which we will look at and and shape the next um, job description. the The other thing that occurred to me, you know, as you were talking about equity and folks were talking about um, equity tools and and equity agenda, is that. Uh, we, we we should probably be mindful and look at the language um, in that executive profile to ensure that equity is seen with with an asset based lens, right? So we don't communicate the fact that um, that that somehow our students do not have the kind of wealth and assets, cultural wealth and assets that that is part and parcel of of, of the value of of our student body and our families and our community. Um, I have read job descriptions and leadership profiles and some of these kinds of searches that, that does not communicate the right understanding of equity in that equity is also about valuing community assets, community relationships, and what our students bring to the table rather than what we have to deliver to students. Um, I don't know if we did that. I wasn't, I, I wasn't involved in the last search, so I hadn't really looked at the job description in that way, but I, I thought that that might be an important thing. I get some questions about timeline. So I wonder if it's worth maybe reviewing the timeline and then um, the question of what happens if we are not able to uh, meet that ambitious timeline. Okay, so let, let me see if I can pull up the timeline so I can actually look at it with, with everyone. Um, all right, hang on. The magic of the internet, bear with me. So those of you who wanna, who wanna um, look at the timeline with us, it should be, um, hang on, oh, timeline. Yeah, while you pull up the timeline, yeah, um, Jessica, I just, just I, I just wanna share that the school committee is very much aware about um, our ambitious timeline and we are all hopeful that we are able to, to meet um, the timeline that we are working with that Pam will review in just a second. Uh, but we're also mindful that should we not, we can't just not have um, an idea of a plan um, or a contingency plan moving forward. So that is something that we are um, thinking about. Um, and while I don't have an exact answer of what that will look like, it is very much top of mind, um, I know, for, for the school committee. Right. And, you know, and Lorena, I saw may I follow up on your response? I would like to know, because I've heard, I'm glad you brought that up, Jessica, because that's been raised several times too, regarding if under discussion is, um, if for whatever reason, because there is always a possibility of things occurring, that of the candidates that come forth, there, there doesn't seem to be a good fit that would really be for the district. Is, is, is the school committee considering a three month interim person or someone else? Uh, interim process if it needs to occur because we are not able to find the right fit. So it hasn't been defined as in like, this is what we would do, or this is the timeline that we would put, um, or the, the tenure that we would put on what the contingency plan would be. Um, but it is something that we are thinking about and, and engaging with on like what that could look like. So right. It's it's kind of a non-answer answer, right? Like I don't I don't want to I don't want to lie to you. Like I don't know what the answer is, but we are working we are working to think through what that contingency plan will be, 
Um, and so I know that I'm not, I'm not sitting here um, hoping that this will work out and not thinking about the possibility that if it doesn't work out, we just don't have anybody to, to lead our district. Right. And, and there are a number of things that the search committee can do to inform whatever decisions that's going to be made at the school committee. And as we walk through this timeline, what we can do is to talk about the critical nature of each one and what kind of conditions you have to have to meet these deadlines in order to move on to the next phase successfully. And that then becomes you know, sort of a, 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 a time for consideration. Now we are um, here, we're on March 18. Oh, actually, we, we are, yeah, that's correct. We're on March 22nd because we extended this March 18th deadline. So the RFPs are here. Um, we have seven of them. Um, we have done the search committee update. That's going to be tomorrow, right, as to, um, as to um, what we've been looking at in terms of um, the job descriptions. The student listening session is on is coming up. The April listening session is coming up, and we're going to try to see if we can modify this to accommodate more languages, if possible. Um, thank you, Jose. Um, and then um, in early April, we will have a search firm um, that the school committee will approve a search firm after the recommendation is made. And then we go into uh, the job description and the call for qualified applicants. Um, where it's going to make a difference in my mind, at least knowing, having been through these searches, is the sufficiency of the pool. Um, and when I say sufficiency, I mean not only number, but also diversity in all of the categories that we know, right? So in, 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 in gender, in, um, in race, ethnicity, um, and any other um, identifiers that we find will be important to consider. Um, and when, if we look at that poll, it's not sufficient and we might need to reopen or extend the period. Um, and that's something that the school committee, I think, needs to know. Um, but, but we wouldn't necessarily know what that looks like until the job, until the search actually starts, right? Until you get the input from, um, um, from, from, from the search consultant about that poll, which is not to say the school committee couldn't have various options in mind. Uh, but that would be the point, that would be a very informative point um, as, to, as to whether the search will be, will be in process um, according to this timeline or other things. So April and search really, April and May is really our, um, our period of interviews, um, the, the first level executive interview, executive session interviews, and then um, finalist interviews that are going to be in public, and then the selection of the finalists um, panel that will be forwarded to the school committee for final decision making. Um, it is um, it is a tight schedule. Um, it's not necessarily an unusual schedule. I've seen I've seen ones. This is on the tight end of all of the searches that I've seen, but it is not an impossible schedule if if we have sufficient um, candidates for the poll and the polls are balanced, right? To to get to where we need to go. Um, so, so the finalist interviews happens and then late June would be the vote. Can I uh, share another question uh, that I have heard a bit is in terms of the public interviews for the finalist, uh, do we have a sense of what that process will look like and if there's opportunities for uh, students, parents, educators and community um, stakeholders to actively participate in it in, in some sort of way? Um, I think the, 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 the search pattern that I remember was two searches ago. Lorena, were, I, were you involved in the, in the last one or were you present in the last one? So you probably can, can tell better. I, I remember the one that I was involved in had public sessions. They, they yeah. were they were brief, but they 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 happen. Right, there were some roundtables. Um, uh, so I was there, and Michael O'Neill was there in the last one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I would imagine in the same way that we've been open with the public, um, mm -hmm. we we might be able to um, to do that as well. I have not seen, um, or I've not participated in conversation about those plans, but I would expect that that would have we would want that to happen. Right, so they would have they would have an open interview 
with the uh, with the school committee, and then there would be some additional informational gathering venues so that you can judge reaction of the public to these candidates, like public forums, really. Jessica, can I ask, since you were involved in the last session um, for that last, and, and you saw what that public um, kind of forum or round table look like, do you have, do you affirm that process or do you have a different suggestion of what that should look like? Yeah, I, the, um, I think this is why it's important uh, who we pick as the search firm that helps to lay out that process, but I thought it was helpful that there were uh, other folks besides those who are on the search committee who are able, other stakeholders who are able to directly interact with uh, the candidates and ask questions, and uh, I, I do think that should be another important piece of this search as well. Yeah, I think the search firm, the, the time before this last one, gathered gathered questions and they were facilitating the question asking right so 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 it went a lot more smoothly they i think they had cards that they passed out to everybody and then they gathered it and asked the candidate the questions and they recorded answers um i would imagine if they are going to be um candidates coming in would want tours of, of and, and and speak to staff um and and so on and and you know ceo interviews are usually full days and you just block off the day and you do all of these things all at once. Um, it's exhausting, but it, but it is also revealing um, how folks react under stress and um, and you know how they answer questions on, on the feet. So so a clarifying question. Um, so also just looking at with the survey where asked if you are there any questions that you think the individual should be asked? Yes. So basically the search firm um, would look at those questions that the community is sending is sending also, and or is it that the search firm got the questions from the selection committee and then they use index cards to ask um, the final candidates the questions? Okay, so so this is this is kind of um, th this is from experiences on a number of executive searches. What happens is that the search firm or whoever staff and search firm uh, doing this together, we gather all of the public input that we've gotten so far, all of the sessions, our discussions, and all the topics that you brought up today. And they would boil it down to, um, to the four or five or six or seven you know, major issues, and they will build them into the job description, right? And therefore, when you, when you create questions for all the candidates who are coming to the table you have a standard set of questions that you ask everybody because you need to preserve equity and 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 fairness right in, in asking those questions so everybody has um has the same set of questions to answer and they come from the public's input about what is important the the individual questions that come back in from the surveys would be part of that in my mind would be part of the um the input that will inform what is going to form the job description? Um, it is. It is also important not to have the questioning period for the for the official committee to be splintered, uh, because there's strategic questions or tactical, you know, there there are tactical questions, and then there there are really questions in special fields that will pop up. So somehow you have an hour to two hours to interact with this candidate. So you want to be able to get to as many of the strategic questions as you can. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, some of those details that come through. What's really good from, my, from what I've observed is that those public interactions, um, the roundtables and, and public interactions directly with, um, with the public, those are good because then you have to dance on your feet, right? If you have special questions on um, facilities, special questions on um, special ed, special questions on all of these different things that pop up, um, addresses how the candidate is versatile. Right, and it's able to telescope from strategic to specific and then back again. And that I think is also part of the test of what it means to be a versatile candidate, right? To be someone who can work for a large district and yet pay attention to communication and all of those different things. So I would imagine that, that there will be a filter and, and hopefully a, a, a good and, and, and porous filter between the input on those surveys as though I wanna ask this question that those questions will then sort of stream and converge, right? With along with other questions that are similar. And if there's enough of a demand for a question, it will surface in the same way that it surfaced for you today. Right. When I when we ask, 
what resonated with you. Um, so that's what I've seen in the past of what search firms do. Um, I, I mean, this, this, some of you have served in, in, in other searches. Does that align with understanding for you? Well, I guess what my question was tailored towards, because I know, I mean, I've been involved in university searches and other things, but every, everyone's a little bit different, right? So I guess my question was more targeted towards even with the last superintendent search, and even if it's not figured out now, if it's going to model in the same manner, because when Jessica brought up the round tables, I wasn't involved in the last superintendent search. I saw some of it, but not all of it. And I think we have many families that either came into BPS and are different stages of engagement that even if it, along with that outline of the time, the dates, I think it's also important and part of this transparency process of once that's the round tables and how it's gonna work, it's also right. flushed through so that everyone here and also the community knows, you know, what are the opportunities they engage, whether it's this round table format or mm -hmm. it's more of, you know, we're doing a lot of things virtually, but is it then right. at that stage when you're talking about tours and in person, kind of figuring out what this is going to look like actually, even in the next steps. And I think that needs to right. be kind of talked about earlier rather than later. I, 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 think you, I think you're right, Roxy. Thank you for, for bringing that up and flagging it for attention. Look, we're going to be meeting once a week, every week. We're going to all become very good friends. Why don't we ask our, our wonderful staff um, to, to to, to put a pin in all of the key processes that we want to, that we want to flesh out and we'll do it um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, and that will inform um, the, um, the work of the search firm as they come in. And in fact, some of the things that came up today may very well inform the folks who are searching, who are serving on the, um, the subcommittee that's going to help us select the search firm. Ask these questions when you're there. Jose, you are part of that group, right? You and you and Michael and um, um, and our chief um, human resource officer, you may want to ask him and say, you know, what have you done in the past, and and give us some ideas. But I agree that ought to be on our agenda to to sort of clarify as we go. Thank you, Roxy. That's really helpful. Uh, meeting remotely is convenient. Um, are we going to have an opportunity to interact with the finalists at least in person, so that we get to know them? It would better. be nice to know what that handshake feels like, right? Yes. <laughs> I think, you know, we can get to know them better yeah. um, if we interact with them in person. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, there, there will be no spike. We're moving towards summertime and, and that will be possible. But it's not something that I, I think we can answer today. But let, let's let's also, you know, remind ourselves that that's something that we want to address along the line. Um, it is now six o'clock. We are a very efficient committee. <laughs> <laughs> I have been saying to, to folks who've been, you know, planning these committee meetings for us, um, for it not to be an hour and a half, that's a really long time at the end of the day. Um, if an hour works for all of you, let's see if we can keep it to an hour. Would that be okay? Does that work for folks? Folks are nodding. Okay. All right. If it doesn't work, we can do something else. But, you know, let, 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 let's try it for an hour so we don't tire folks out. So we will see you next week at the same time and 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 that concludes our business for this evening um so I ask one more question yes ma'am um can, are we going to be able to come back to jose's point uh when we meet next week about I'm, having different languages represented right i'm i'm hoping so so let's 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 um let's do this before we go let's let's name the things that we'll come back to next week right so we're gonna do some work on jose's suggestion on multiple languages. Um, we will um, keep on the agenda what Roxy suggested today, which is the fleshing out of, um, of, the, of, the, of the executive interviews, executive session interviews, the public interviews and the round tables. And Jose, if you can do us a favor and carry into your discussion um, on the selection of the search firm to see what information you can surface from them to add to this discussion. That would be really good. Anything else we need to talk about next week? I I put something in the chat, Pam. Uh, oh, just okay. um, I think it might be worth reviewing. Actually, the last process. I'm actually racking my brain. I know it was just okay. a few years ago, but it feels like ten years ago at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would appreciate a refresher too, and think about you know what can we do better? What did we learn from that process? And okay. Yeah, and maybe that's a question for the subcommittee too for the search right. firms as well. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, one I, other thing I would add for the subcommittee, I agree with Jessica about the, what worked, and we have to know the process of, that occurred last time. That's just a given to, to me. Um, but also for that subcommittee, some of the notes and communications I've read, also the thing that stood out is, are they going to engage as far as looking at how any candidates that get towards the final selection process actually work with not just references in the sense of who is your supervisor and all these other things, but also the community, right? Um, feedback yeah. from the community, from families, from, you know, every district required to have a spec pack group. And if they have a multilingual learner's office and these communities that we may also have here and stakeholders, when we get to those final stages, I would like to make sure that the search firms also looked at feedback from those communities that they have worked with in the past, the, meaning the candidates have worked with in the past. So, so, so Jose, that's a lot to carry <laughs> from here to, to your subcommittee. And I thank you ahead of time for, for your good work. These are really all good suggestions. So, you know, take, see, see what the search, firm, search firms believe is an optimal process, what work, what didn't work. Um, anything else we need to put on the agenda for, for, for next week? We can also circulate that agenda ahead of time. So if you need to add or subtract things to it, uh, we can to make our time uh, useful. All right, and Roxy, I'm so sorry about, you know, about, about the, the five o'clock hour. I know we struggle with that. Um, so we will continue to struggle and see if we can do better. Um, this will be default if we couldn't come up with anything better. I'm, I, my, my apologies um, on that. Okay, so um, I think we need to do a roll call um, and I need to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have, we have a motion, we have a second. And Ms. Sullivan, would you kindly do the roll call for us? Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Dr. Pignato? Yes. Mr. Roundtree? Mr. Roundtree? Yes, sorry, I was on mute. Thank you. Ms. Tang? Yes. Mr. Valenzuela? Yes. Dr. Edinger? Yes. Ms. Lopera? Yes. Mr. McNeil, it's unanimous, thank you. Okay, thank you, good night everybody. Thank you for your good work. Liz, can you and I connect um, for, for a minute, um, maybe on the phone? Absolutely. Okay, thank you everybody, have a good night. Thank you for being here. <laughs>